My name is Christina Hendricks, and I teach philosophy at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, BC, Canada. In this video, I'll be explaining some of the historical and political background for Socrates and Plato to help you better understand Plato's dialogues. This is video two of a two-part series, so you might want to take a look at the first video first. Socrates and Plato lived through a war between Athens and its allies, and another city-state called Sparta and its allies. The history of this is important for understanding why Socrates was put on trial and executed by Athens. There were many ups and downs in the war, and some people in Athens were critical of democracy because they felt that it was too inconsistent, with policies going one way and then another as votes were swayed by rhetoric. Athens finally lost to Sparta in 404 BCE. When Athens lost the war, a new government was set up by Sparta called the Thirty Tyrants. The Thirty Tyrants were made up of people who were against democracy and wanted to set up a rule by a few, such as there was in Sparta at the time. They executed some proponents of democracy, over 1,000 people, took lands from others. Many Democrats left Athens during this time. Some of the Thirty were relatives of Plato, and Plato himself was not a fan of democracy. He thought that states should be run by people who know how to run them, not everyday citizens. Still, he did not agree with the Thirty Tyrants and criticized them later. After only nine months, the Thirty Tyrants were overthrown by exiled Democrats and democracy was restored in Athens in 403 BCE. As stated in the first video, Socrates seems to have walked around Athens engaging people in philosophical conversations. But the way he went about this probably angered people. In the dialogue called Euthyphro, you can see that he asks people to tell them their views about something. And then he shows what is wrong with those views, which probably made people angry. It's important to remember that the dialogues we're reading, though, are fictional. They were written by Plato and probably didn't take place as he wrote them. Still, it may have been that Socrates really did act like that. In 399 BCE, Socrates was put on trial in Athens. The official charges were impiety and corruption of the youth. Impiety meant that he was charged with not worshipping the same gods as the official gods of the city. The corruption of the youth charge could have referred to him teaching young people false gods or could have referred to him corrupting them in other ways. In the account of his trial written by Plato, Socrates says that he went around the city questioning the leaders of society and showing that they weren't as wise as they thought they were. And since young people would follow him around and do the same, this could be one way people thought Socrates corrupted the youth. In addition, Socrates may have been thought anti-democratic. One of the Thirty Tyrants was a student of his, and one of his close friends was a traitor to Athens giving information to Sparta. There's also historical evidence that Socrates didn't think people who know nothing about ruling should have a say in government. At the time of Socrates' trial, Athens was only a few years past the rule of 30 tyrants, and democracy may have still been seen as quite fragile. Perhaps some people were worried that his great social influence on the young could have included anti-democracy. Though exactly why Socrates was put on trial and convicted is not historically certain, what is certain is that after his conviction, he was executed by the state. He drank a poison called hemlock and died in prison. Thanks to Plato and a few other philosophers, though, Socrates' philosophical activities and views have continued on, and he is still considered a very important figure in the history of Western philosophy.